when purchasing a low-end smartphone, you might get more than you bargained for. So Matt, you have a story on some low-end Chinese smartphones that may be uh, costing consumers more than they think. That's right. So uh, this is some research by a company called SecureD. Um, they're taking a look at low-end mobile devices, specifically because they were seeing a lot of fraud activity from a particular manufacturer, Transion. Uh, this manufacturer makes uh, handsets for the African market. Uh, and one particular model over there is they were seeing a huge number of uh, subscription fraud attempts from these handsets. Uh, that's when you you know the uh, the malware installed on the machine is trying to sign you up for a service you didn't want to pay for in the first place uh, just to make money off of you. They were seeing a large number, and when I say large, I mean 12.9 million fraudulent transaction attempts coming from um, Egypt, South Africa, Cameroon, Ghana, other other such nations in Africa. So they took a look at it. Uh, turns out that this particular model handset had a um, had an issue where at some point in the supply chain, this uh, Triada malware was being installed. So Triada is kind of the downloader slash loader portion of the malware. Uh, Xhelper is the actual backdoor malware and the stuff that does everything that's kind of nasty. So these two, these two bits of malware go hand in hand. Um, and this is a malware that was doing click fraud and transaction fraud. So basically if this was on your phone, you wake up one morning and find out that your bill was 10 times higher than you expected and you were signed up for all sorts of things you didn't want to sign up for. Um, so they found around 53,000 unique devices of this model with X helper installations. So I guess what, what uh, we would want to tell people about this is, I mean, if you have this particular model phone um, that's, that's outlined in the article, I would say get rid of it. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's a very easy malware to get rid of. Uh, in terms of uninstalling it. Um, apparently, if you remove it, even if it doesn't have an internet connection within five minutes or so, it manages to reinstall itself, very pernicious. Um, I guess what might be a saving grace is that these are not very expensive phones. Like I said, these are low-end phones, um, around 30 US dollars. I mean, if, if you're somebody who's, whose only option is one of these phones, um, I'm sorry, you're kind of out of luck. I, I wouldn't use them for anything at this point, but um, ultimately, I think if you want to avoid this sort of thing, the best thing you can do is keep an eye on your bill and keep an eye on uh, what software is installed on your phone. If you start seeing unexplained charges or data overages and you're clearly not using your phone as heavily as your bill would suggest, it's time to talk to your, uh, to your service provider, see what's going on. Maybe there's an explanation, and if they get enough of those cases, uh, they might be able to do something and, and determine whether or not there's actually some sort of supply chain issue with malware. We go. Uh, it, it doesn't surprise me, right? Like, I, I guess you you get what you pay for. And as you mentioned, like a thirty dollar phone from from a Chinese ma manufacturer, you need to be careful, right? And I believe it's not the first time it has happened, right? I, I remember a bunch of times where. The SD cards that they were using to to build those phones were infected, and you know multiple vendors had had the same issue. So as you mentioned, like I, I'll be careful with uh, how you use these phones, and and you know try to to get phones from like well established vendors that you know are gonna have in place some security measures in terms of validating you know as you mentioned supply chains, uh, validating that the phones are secure. And that can, you know, spend the, the the right amount of money on on actually making sure that those funds are secure uh, to start with. Mm -hmm. I agree. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe a general issue with with some of these low end smartphones, maybe that are more adware uh, driven, is you may get desensitized, right, to seeing these pop ups, right, um, until it's maybe even too late, and then you get signed up. I think it mentioned in the article some of these services, these premium services, and then you know, next thing you know, your, you know, your $30 smartphone is costing you more than like, like, like Jaime said, more reputable phones. So it's, it's um, you, like Jaime said, you get what you pay for, but you definitely have to keep an eye out, get, get a, a reputable vendor phone and, um, you know, you can avoid these situations. You know, you made a very good point there uh, about 
uh, adware. Uh, there are low-end phones that are subsidized through adware. I remember having one of those phones myself uh, for a brief amount of time, not realizing that it was not just sending my information to uh, one of the official sponsors. Uh, it, actually, it actually turned out that they were sending that data back to China as well, um, which was a problem, obviously. Um, but I think in this case, there's an important distinction uh, that the manufacturer in this case claims that this is a supply chain attack and not uh, something that was intentionally put there by that manufacturer. Now, this is all I know of it at this point. I can't say one way or the other if this is, you know, if this is actually the case. But um, I think people could, I think that when people enter into a bargain um, like that where they understand what kind of data is being shared and it's, it's defraying the cost of the phone, I think that's a, something that some people might actually go for. Uh, when it's a supply chain attack, uh, that, that's, I feel like nobody knows that it's happening and it's a terrible thing uh, and it's not some sort of informed decision. So here uh, it seems like um, it's, it's kind of hard to say. And I, I know uh, Jaime, you mentioned buying from reputable vendors in the first place, and I think that's probably the best way to go. Um, if you've heard of a company, if you, they have a track record of of caring about malware, of caring about their, their customer security, um, that's better than, than buying from a company you haven't heard of before and you don't know how they've dealt with these sorts of things in the past.